welcome back to TV City, the podcast. And uh, today we're missing Jen, but um, she she had to go shopping. <laughs> and then JP uh, posted like a really cool meme about her going shopping. Um, that was that was actually kind of funny. And <coughs> yeah, but was it JP like of her like just getting like all the chips bags or whatever from the? <laughs> jumpsuit and, and then, then like, like uh, 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 um, a b- another like, meet, like a gif of full eating, eating all the candy and stuff that was, that was pretty cool but uh, uh anyways today, today we're here with uh, the guild road chapter in the very beginning we set out to create an online game like no one had ever seen before a game that invited players to be a part of something really, really big. A world where players could explore, adventure, and write their own stories. We had no idea how huge this was going to be. It's been 10 years. Come join us for what's next. Westwield's in danger. I can feel it. From the Colovian Highlands. To the mysterious Dawnwood. All along the gold road. It's like we're a glass chalice balanced on the table's edge. And it's about to fall and shatter. There's new trials and spell crafting, aka striving. It's, it's, it's gonna be a grind, but not as bad. And um, yeah, new chapters, new new uh, RP role playing. <laughs> JP, what do you think? Hey everybody, I'm Kira, and I am so excited to give you an overview of the awesome new scribing system that is coming out in the new Gold Road chapter of The Elder Scrolls Online. Scribing is a new system that is really focused on roleplay and choice. So we've given them agency over their skills. We have 11 new skills that you can customize. These skills are called grimoires. Each of these grimoires can be customized in three ways. A focus script, which allows you to change the main function of the ability. A signature script, which gives you access to some very interesting, unique effects. And an affix script, which has given you access to the major and minor buff system that you've come to know and love. But let's talk about how do you get access? Well, If you own Gold Road, when the chapter launches, you'll notice that there are a lot of new scribing quest givers outside the various mages' guilds. You'll see this gentleman, Adept Ernard, talk to Ernard, and that'll kick off the scribing questline. So we're here in the Scalarium, which is where you're going to spend a lot of your time on the scribing questline. You'll run up to the scribing altar and go ahead and use it. You'll notice immediately all of the different grimoires that you have unlocked. Here we have them all unlocked, so you'll see that there are six for the weapon skills, one for the fighter's guild, one for the mage's guild, and one for PvP. Today we're gonna take a look at Soulburst because it's one of my favorites. 
So Soul Burst, you'll notice from its grimoire description, allows you to pull power from the very core of your being and unleash it in a circle around you, affecting either allies or enemies. So I've selected my grimoire and I come in and I can immediately see all of the scripts that are relevant for this grimoire and that I have unlocked. So there are quite a few focus scripts that I could choose, whether it's a damage type or a different sort of crowd control or maybe an ally focused ability. I'm tempted by this one, the pull script. It's one of my favorites. You'll notice that when I add it to the grimoire, it goes ahead and updates both my target type and the cost of the ability. Focus scripts define not only the main function of an ability, but also how much it'll cost and what resource that is. So once I have selected my focus script, and I'm happy with that, I can go and choose which signature script that I'd like. There are lots of options here, but it's really about what works for you. What do you have in your build that you like? Is there an ability that you're not crazy about that you might want to replace? Is there a strength you want to lean into? A weakness you want to shore up? The thing about these abilities is that they're so flexible. You can really choose the right way to customize it for you. So for this signature script, I don't really run a lot of healing in my build. So I'm pretty tempted to take healing over time. We'll see that that updates in the tooltip. But then I think about it and I'm like, you know, because I have chosen an enemy targeted focus script in my pull, this healing over time will only impact me. However, if I will go back up to focus scripts and I maybe choose a healing focus, well then that healing over time signature script will impact both me and my allies in that circular area of effect. So there's some really interesting decisions that you can make do you want to have your build be a little bit more selfish? Do you want it to be more ally focused? And you can go from there. But you'll notice when I chose that healing focus, some of these signatures became unavailable. It doesn't mean that you can't still use them on this grimoire if you want. You just can't use them in conjunction with that particular focus. So we'll continue with building sort of our ally focused ability. And I really like Expedition. Get a little bit of a bonus <coughs> movement speed in there. Again, because this is an AOE and this is ally focused, this buff will also impact my allies who are in range. So now it's the time to make the thing. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen that it shows that it costs three inks. Inks are things that you can find out in the world and that is your crafting currency for scribing. The amount of ink charged is equal to the number of scripts that you've added to a given grimoire. Since I'm scribing this one for the first time, it'll cost three. If I was just changing out a single script, well, then it would only cost me one ink. And with that, we're going to go ahead and craft the script. Now let's show you that soul burst in action. You can see that burst heal, heal over time, minor expedition combo is great for supporting group content, whether you like dungeons or PVP. But let's look at a few other combinations too. This one is Soul Burst with a pull focus and the Arcanist Class Mastery Signature Script and Minor Breach. The Class Mastery Scripts are a special set of unique signature scripts that allow you to access mechanics and passives from your class. One more for the road. Here's Soul Burst with Shock Damage, Shock Damage Over Time, and Minor Intellect. No matter your weapon or your class, if you focus on damage, tanking, or support, there's something in scribing that can help your build be more effective, more streamlined, or just more fun. There are over 300 unique skill variations just for Soul Burst, and over 4,000 combinations of grimoires and scripts coming with scribing. So that's scribing. We're so excited to see what you all do with it. I can't wait to see what scripts you find out in the world, what grimoires you put them together with, and how they work into the various builds and metas that you create. Hope to see you soon on the Gold Road. Um, so
So, initially, like, I feel like I am with every chapter. I felt I was a little so cynical. Like, I, I don't know. I wasn't, like, super pumped. Um, only because I don't think most of the... I mean, there's a few spellcrafting things that are going to be impactful. Um, you know, such as the ability, you know, for a healer to craft a resto ability, you know, and give minor heroism. That a lot of corpus and things are using to like craft and stuff like that, but you know it's not as common in you know your mid-level like teams and even some of the higher-level teams. So I'm kind of happy to have that available um, to everybody from like an in-game standpoint. Um, and then some of the stuff that you can do um, with the tanks and stuff and the shield throw and his AOE taunt. So it seems like some useful like flexibility could be like pretty good for like four man. So the rest of it though, like the other 95% of it, it seems like, I don't know, it's just very, I don't know, there's enough sets in the game, if you want enough like build diversity, you can do some cool things with like sets, so it just seems like more of, more or less, more of that, um, which is fine, but I mean, as an in-game player and someone that that's their whole focus in like ESO, it didn't really appeal to me. Um, but then I started thinking a little deeper about it and being less of a cynic and thinking like, um, you know, this, this system, it's a system. This isn't a one and done, I don't believe. So just like antiquities, sometimes we get good mythics, sometimes we got bad mythics, sometimes the mythics are very impactful, sometimes they're kind of bland. So I, this is only the first like weapon skill line and my thought process started to change a little bit and it's like, okay, well, like, what's next? Like, what are they going to do next? Is there going to be class ones? Like, am I going to have like, more flexibility within a class? Which is a little more exciting to me, you know? It's going to you know, make my Arcanist Beam, like, do, like, actually changing, like, the class abilities to specific, like, ma damage types and things like, like you can with the customized ones, but yeah. Yeah. that, like, aspect of it. Are we going to be able to, like, I want to be able to craft my own ultimate one day, like, for, for the particular class I'm on, and I'm sure that all that stuff is, is coming. So initially I wasn't excited. Now I start thinking about the potential future and then realizing with, like, 60 different scripts and, and 10 grimoires to farm that I have this theory that much like um, antiquity, antiquity. Some of the leads like overlap, right? How many, how many times did you sit with that world boss to get the lead for, you know, the mythic that you were getting, and you got the purple like housing item? But, and then once you, it seems like once you scribed or dug that up with, with um, scrying, you know, then it was a lot easier to get your. Uh, I noticed like throughout farming the mythic items, that, like once you got the base purple ones out of the way, then you would get like the drop. So I just have a, I have a theory that. It's going to be a good idea to like as much as like people don't like grinding and we all say we don't but i mean that last event like how many people were were farming like the gold pages like, <laughs> so we all, we don't, like, people that 20 hours for that so my theory is like get these initial 60 or whatever they are knocked out of the way and then when they start to get to like more powerful stuff and you decide that oh my gosh completely like min max that way you're already like ahead of the game basically it'll be less of a grind then. so and i think it's cool anyways i like anything that incorporates like parts of the map it'll be cool seeing people running around in groups and things like that like out in the world i, I do i do see the whole it could come class wise uh later on and i'm pretty sure that they're probably thinking about it if they haven't already started working on it just because it does make sense for them to do you know the class for the grimoires because they kind of took a little bit of the class identity away when this whole first set of you know um scribing came out so it wouldn't make sense to kind of give you back that class identity um, you know, you want to have an Arcanist or, you know, a Templar in your group because this Templar skill by does this. Um, 
So that, that is, I do see the possibility of that, and, and I hope that is where they're going to be. That's, that's the, that's the, the end game of it, I guess. Um, but, but I do I agree that they can't release all of that at once because then people would just be very, very overwhelmed. Um, if, you know, imagine if they released all the mythics that we have now all at once. Like, like that's, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, I could definitely, definitely see them releasing in each chapter release, um, maybe even, you know, DLC-wise, like two or three, um, more scripts that, uh, that we can do, maybe even more, maybe five, um, and then kind of going and building from it, and, and just building the system that, that we have, like, there's already a lot of good striving things that I'm gonna have to get as a healer, just because of the utility of it in a 12-man group, um, for PvE content. So, so I'm excited to see that, that, uh, that, that there's only 60, the rent is going to be real, but it's not as bad because the scripts you're going to be able to buy some from the guild traders. Yes, they're going to be expensive, but um, if you don't want to do the grind, then you better pay the dude that is selling it on the guild traders. And a lot of people are going to be farming it, because, I mean, like you said, this last event, I, I farm for four days with Omen, so... People, people are gonna, gonna get, get those scripts and they're gonna, they're gonna put them in the guild traders. traders. Yeah, yeah I, I <laughs> complained about it. Um, I still don't have the one from the geysers and I still um, don't have the one from the Vardy Fall bosses. Cause I just gave up. I was like, you know what, this is, this is crazy cause the, the drop rate for that is, was incredibly bad. And I do see that these scripts are probably, the drop rate for these are gonna be a little bit better than that. Um, in my opinion, but, but you, you are, are gonna have to die. Um, Bob, Bob what, what do you think, think about the new striving system? system? What do you like about it? Well, I mean, it's like JP said that ESO and Zoss, they they've never put in a system into the game that they have not built upon, <laughs> essentially. Um, I mean, you look at scrying, and it started out as little, you know, little trinkets for your house, and then it morphed into, you know, hey, you can get these really cool mythics, and then I'm sure it's going to morph into more scribing stuff for, you know, for these these, these spells, and then, um, you know, they, they always have a plan uh, put in place, and I definitely agree that I think eventually they will move into uh, move into class because look at the infinite archive they've already started messing with class skills specifically yep. by making sets that yep. Yep. Class, class gear, class class gear. gear. Yeah. so again they're, they're already in the background they've already kind of foretold hey we're probably going to mess with class skills at some point you know uh, having these sets in there. Uh, not only that the visuals look really cool too uh you know we kind of got some sneak peeks at the gold road visuals with thorax the, yep. you know, the box there uh, in Infinite Archive. So they, they never do anything without intention. So I'm sure they are planning more things for this uh, scribing uh, in spell, you know, and I know people are saying that spell theory or spell crafting or whatever. I don't, I don't think they'll ever call it spell crafting, but definitely scribing. It's, it's close, close enough. enough. <laughs> yeah, it's close, it is close, close enough. enough. Um, you know, they got to put some parameters around it because if they just left it wide open, you'd do something stupid and be too overpowered. So, um, they've done it before. So. Um, but no, I mean, I, I like it. It's 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 neat. Uh, it's a it's a neat concept. Um, you know, like JP said, I was kind of looking over a couple of things, and, and for big group play, I can see. I can see some of the skills for big group play being. You know, being super important to have, um, and then you know, I think a bulk of a lot of bulk of it is, you know, for the people who you know are solo or, or go around with a friend and go, you know, want to have new fun things to play with, you know, going around the world, which is cool too. I mean, that's part of the community as well. Um, and so, I, you know, overall, I think it's I think it's a good a good push to to have some built-in diversity and it's not 
dependent upon a new set that they kind of come up with, like a five-piece bonus mm -hmm. you know, type of. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm sure I'm gonna make something a different color. One of my skills is a different oh, color. Just <laughs> <laughs> you know? there's, there's there's people, people, people have been, been thinking of doing that for years. So I'm sure, sure like, like when, when the chapter, chapter comes out, out that, that people are not, not even gonna go striving, gonna like start messing with that, messing with their skills, putting like new colors or whatever. Um, so I, I mean, <laughs> why, why wouldn't you? Like, people have asked for this, and they finally gave it to us. And it's, it's so, I guess graphic in the game, it really doesn't do anything to, to have it a certain way. Um, not like the, you know, the AOE um, combat colors that we get. It's, it's just, you know, a color, color of your skill. Um, so it doesn't really, really do anything for you other than make you <coughs> happier that, that your skill is purple red. instead of, like, red. You know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, think about how many people spend hours in front of the dressing room, you know, making their character look a certain way. And mm -hmm. Mark does that! And now you can have a skill that matches your clothing aesthetic. Don't, Don't give them ideas, guys. Like, seriously. In necro, like a... Yeah. yeah. Don't, Don't give Merc ideas, ideas yeah. of... Don't, Don't give, give him ideas, ideas because he stands in front of the freaking uh, color table or whatever with outfits, and now he's gonna be able to do that with skills, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah Merc is gonna be doing that. I'm gonna do it too. I'm gonna be RP <laughs> with my dark flame yeah. Yeah. necro like wall. Can you crazy? Like, like he, he was he was doing that with this arcanist the other day and then he, he figured that um he actually figured something out that we I didn't, I didn't even know about it until he pointed that out to me that the you, you can actually go back to the original color of your uh costume if you have dyed it before. Um you can go back to the original color of the costume in, in that thing and I was like oh my gosh I didn't even know that and he's been wanting to know how to do that for years or if that's even possible and I don't even think he looked it up so Everyone's gonna go on the new trial or invest and farm like perfected gear, right? But we're all gonna be together out killing world bosses and doing daily delve quests together. Yep. Yep. It's something that like as a guild, I think it's really good. We, you know, that could be a guild activity or you know, a group quest share, like strip grimoire like farm, right? Oh, oh I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Something that everyone can participate in. I imagine like trading them between groups and guildies and stuff like that. I think it's really good for like just because it's not just a specific like in-game thing like that you know you try it, right? It's access and it and it. That's the one thing that I always that I, like even with this last event that he was really cool. Just like you know sitting at a world boss with you know all different like types of people, you know, and just everyone housing people, in-game people like crap. You know what I mean? It's I think it's definitely going to be something where it's going to create an opportunity to bring different groups of people in the game together, like interacting, which is cool. Mm -hmm. it's like through open world stuff, I think that's really cool. Like quests, it's not tied behind like hard time, which I think is cool. Yeah, yeah there's um, there's already a you know we have the Kugi Raiders, and I'm pretty sure if I was past more than Zambra. You know, when the new road, uh, the world road chapter comes out, um, for that first week at least, maybe even the first two weeks, for them to do something differently than the trial, maybe like do the trial the first week on normal or whatever, um, or like the second week or, or whatnot, and then like kind of go do some, like, big group content, um, you know, world bosses or whatever to, to farm some grimoires, just for like a week or so. 
I'm sure, sure they'll probably do that. Um, but so I can see people trading amongst each other, and I can see people posting in the guild, like, hey, I have this, trading it for, like, another striving ship that I don't have. Um, or just putting in the guild trader. It's cool how they did that part of it, honestly. It's not yeah. some kill this vet boss in a dungeon. Yeah. You have a chance, chance to, to, to get it from, from, from a lot of sources, sources which... The, 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 the drop table... Or maybe a power spike to their build or whatever. Yeah. 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 Like that it doesn't really touch too much in-game stuff in there, but that's fine too. Like, like Bob said, like, people that just want to have fun and try things, it's cool that it, it, I do like the accessibility that, like, it gives everyone. Yeah, yeah. Speaking, speaking, speaking of putting things in the guild traders, they, they are gonna change, um, or they, they have dropped, dropped this change to PTS. PTS. Now, now whether, whether they, they go through with it or not, it or not I don't know, because there's, there's been, been a backlash, backlash about it, about um, on the forums, about, about the whole 14 day mail and guild trading listings. I don't agree with the mail side of it. I do, I do agree with the guild trading listings. listings. Um, there's, there's pros and cons for it. it. Um, I was talking to you, JP, the other day about the bad part about the guild trading listings is that there's rare items that sometimes get listed and act even after thirty days, but then when you put it again, they'll they'll sell <laughs> because there's so few people that need that. Or that, or that have the money at that time to get, get like, a two or three million dollar pattern. And, and like, 14 days is not gonna be enough. Um, and, and I, I, I hadn't really thought, thought about that until the people in the European server started talking about it. And they said, well, might as well just go and make it in one chat instead of putting in the guild traders. Because if you have, like, a big, you know, five, six, seven mil pattern or, like, the the prior pays or whatever and uh, some margins of it are stupid expensive we might as well sell it in you know zone chat so we might see if that change happens we might not see as many um i guess rare patterns in the traders which could cause the price to go up for me hint hint and we might see them pop more in zone chat um, with those full chat sellers. As far as the mail goes, I personally do not like it because that's where Merc stacks his treasure map. And I feel like if they could make treasure map stackable, which I'm not the only one crying about this, there's people crying on the forums and have been doing it for years. We can stack treasure maps, like we can stack surveys. I feel like it would be. That whole 14 day, you know, day thing in the mail wouldn't really be an issue for for anybody. But there's people that do stack stuff in the mail, and that that could be a problem for them. Which I think that uh, some people that do that are the ones that don't have real good luck. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, plus I guess I don't know, Bob. What do you think about that? What do you think about that 14 day? Well, I mean, I don't use. I don't use the trader as much as a lot of people. So, I mean, I I use it, you know, occasionally when I get a a, 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 a mochi for a pattern or something that that I already have, and I know I can sell it for a decent amount. Mm -hmm. um, so the 14 day thing, it's probably not going to personally affect me, um, but I can see where people who I mean that's part of the community. So there are people who just do trader. I mean, yeah. that's what they like to do. They like to play the economy. Oh. Um, I, I could see where it could be a little bit tougher for them. Let me let me throw this out here, though. Uh -huh. What if this is the first step to ESO making an in-house auction page where it lists everything oh, man, and you can search it? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Are you, Are you talking about, like, we'll still have the trader, but you can actually search for the trade? Search for an item. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm down, down with that. I'm not, not down with the all-in-one auction house and no guild traders. But, but the search, search engine inside, inside the trader? Yes. yes. 
Let's, Let's go. go. Like, I am on board for that. Huh? Make your stall position irrelevant. Yeah. It would, but, but you still have the guilds. Like, and there's people that I can get there's people that have not shop at specific guild traders for certain guilds. So, yes, it would make the stall irrelevant, but it could also... Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, you would think I'm joking. I'm, I'm not. not. Like, there's people that will not shop at certain guild traders. They're like, oh, oh this is such and such a guild. Uh, you know, F you. I'm not coming. I'm not giving you a dime. You'd be surprised. But it happens. So your location would be irrelevant at yeah. that yeah. point. But yeah. you still would have to have a location to be able to post on it. Ex and that's, and that's, that's, that's actually not bad, bad because maybe I'll bring the freaking, freaking trade prices, prices down. Like, like oh, yeah, no, God. Well, not only that, but if you do that, you have to then go to that trader and that location to get that item. Yeah. yeah. Which now makes you explore that area that you may not have gone into. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh Bob. Like, like, I, I am fully on board, board with that. that. I'm just thinking as a developer, like, okay, yeah. Yeah. I want to get people out into the game and out into the world so that they spend more time in the world and play, and then, you know, Steam counters. Oh, well, the more time you spend in the game, the more money you might spend on the game. So this might be a way or their first step to getting people to get out to these other I, players that they don't normally go to. Yep, yep. I, am I am all for that, that because, because there's, there's some, some small traders, traders that have little, you know, smaller stalls in, like, the middle of the wilderness. But they can have some good deals sometimes. Um, so, that, I mean, hell. The, that's basically Sam Wheels Trading Center to explore a console. I'm literally 100% on board. I don't know, Bob, that might have some years. If that's the, like, end game of that, the coding for that, I think it's gonna be... Uh, that's, that's gonna, gonna be rough, rough if that's, that's the, the, the way, way they're going. Westwield's in danger. I can feel it. From the Colovian Highlands. Mysterious Dawnwood. And all along the Gold Road. It's like we're a glass chalice balanced on the table's edge. And it's about to fall and shatter. Throwing my mouth in like every fight. In the fight. So, so come join us to throw the mouth in the fight. Hey folks, have a good day, and uh, you know, like, subscribe for more content just like this.